Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, we look into the basics on the dinosaur most needing of a manicure. It's the truly bizarre ornithomimosaur, Dino Chirus. The earliest remains of Dinochirus can be attributed to Polish paleontologist Zofia Kielan Jaworowska in 1965, discovered in the modern day country of Mongolia, and more specifically, the Nemet Basin, an area of the Gobi Desert. This original specimen was fairly eroded and jumbled up, but included much of the forelimbs, a shoulder girdle, and an assortment of ribs and vertebrae. Kielin Jaworowska would announce the discovery of these remains in a 1968 report, alongside fellow paleontologist Nadine Dovchin, but would not be named until 1970. The naming of this creature would fall to fellow Polish paleontologists Halska Osmolska and Ewa Roniewicz, naming the creature Dinochirus morificus. These mid-1960s remains would be the only evidence of this creature for another four decades, leading to Dinochirus often being considered one of the most mysterious dinosaurs of the time. Not just because we had limited remains, believe me, that's nothing new for dinosaurs, but what remains we did have were bizarre, particularly their large forelimbs. More light would finally be shined on this creature in 2013, when two new specimens of Dinochirus would be unveiled at a paleontology conference, one first being discovered in 2006 by a joint Korean-Mongolian expedition, and another later found in 2009. Both these specimens had part of their skeletons looted by poachers, but after much of these looted bones were returned in 2014, the Dinochirus had two nearly complete specimens to help us better understand what this creature even was. The name Dinochirus stems from Greek, being broken into dinos for horrible and care meaning hand, directly translating to horrible hand. This title is certainly earned, as their massive forelimbs, ending in large, blunted claws, are certainly gnarly for any dinosaur to wield, even among carnivores. The only species of this creature, Morificus, this time stems from Latin, and has a few different translations, but it is often translated to peculiar and unusual. This naming choice will slowly make more sense as the video goes on. A common misconception of Dinochirus is that they belong to another grouping of strange theropods, called the Therizinosauridae, named after one of their most famed and possibly bizarrest members, the Therizinosaurus. It certainly isn't hard to see why. Both are giant herbivorous theropods with large forelimbs as well as possibly both being covered in feathers. An early classification by Mongolian paleontologist Rinchen Barsbold would group the Therizinosauridae and Dinochirus under the same grouping, calling it the Dinochirosauria. Today, it is not believed Dinochirus had any strong relation to Therizinosaurs. Instead, Dinochirus actually falls under another group of herbivorous theropods, called the Ornithomimosauria. The ornithomimosaurs were a group of herbivorous and omnivorous dinosaurs from the early to late Cretaceous, often characterized for their superficial resemblance to modern-day ostrich. Sporting slender necks to reach for vegetation, and equipped with long legs to reach high speeds and escape predators. Some of their more well-known members include the Gallimimus, recognized as the dinosaur that got bodied by a T-Rex in the first Jurassic Park film, and the Struthiomimus, shown here equipped with laser cannons and ridden by the classic character Nimbus. Nimbus doesn't just equip anyone with laser cannons. Wait, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, this thing. Estimates believe the Dinochirus at max size could reach nearly 36 feet or 11 meters in length, 
and nearly 12 feet or 4 meters tall. At this size, it could weigh nearly 6 tons. It is hard to choose just one feature to focus on when discussing this creature's weirdness, but let's go with the skull. Measuring nearly 3 feet or a meter at full size, the back of this skull was similar to other members of its grouping, with a low and narrow foundation, sporting large round eyes. Its mouth, however, was much more unique, flattening out into a toothless beak, similar to that of modern ducks, with some experts even believing this beak to be covered in keratin during its life. Some may notice a resemblance to hadrosaurs, but the similarities stop at appearance. The deep lower jaw and thin upper jaw of Dinochirus would make chewing nearly impossible, hinting at a more specialized diet for this creature. The diet of Dinochirus has been a perplexing issue for decades, but scientists now believe Dinochirus was largely an aquatic herbivore feeding on underwater foliage or riverside plant life. The lack of teeth makes this theory more likely, as the soft vegetation at the bottom of lakes would need little processing before moving further through the body. The jaw structure of this creature further reinforces this belief. The wide bill would be useful in sweeping up bunches of vegetation from a lake floor, and the deeper lower jaw construction indicates this creature most likely had a large tongue, which would further benefit this creature in sweeping the bottom of water bodies. And that's the only thing a long tongue is good for. While this plant material would not need much processing, it is likely Dinochirus would use gastroliths, or stomach stones, to grind up larger pieces of plant material in their stomachs. The skull of Dinochirus would be supported by a long and fairly thin neck. Just below this neck would be their incredible forelimbs, which could reach a staggering 8 feet or 2.5 meters in length. Dinochirus, along with their former family member Therizinosaurus, are recognized for possessing some of the largest forelimbs among any bipedal dinosaur. The claws alone for Dinochirus could reach 8 inches, or about 20 centimeters in length, and were fairly blunt in comparison to other theropods. Our understanding of how these arms were used has changed wildly over time. Early interpretations, particularly its original description by Osmolska and Ronewix, believed these arms were for tearing into prey, as the original description of Dinochirus described the creature to be an allosaur-like carnivore. Later studies, particularly the works of Anatoly Rostesvensky, compared these arms and claws to modern-day sloths, believing Dinochirus would be a specialized climber and feasted on leaves and fruits in the treetops. Today, it is believed these claws serve two main purposes. One was foraging, that these blunt claws would be useful in digging up plants from lake beds, as well as gathering groups of vegetation to shove into their mouths. Another use was defense. While lacking the sharp edge of some of its carnivorous counterparts, with enough brute force, these claws could deal devastating damage and easily cut into the flesh of would-be predators. The body of Dinochirus, while bulky, was believed to be fairly narrow, especially when compared to the pot-bellied Therizinosaurus. Based on the length of various neural spines toward the middle of its back, it is likely Dinochirus would sport some type of sail-like structure, although some scientists and artists instead portray this protrusion as a hump similar to the Acrocanthosaurus. Its hind limbs were fairly stout in appearance, and would make running somewhat difficult for this creature. Dinochirus would more likely wade through bodies of water, and stand its ground when under threat. This body would lead into a long tail, possibly ending in a fan of feathers near the end, if they are anything like their fellow ornithomimosaurs. The presence of feathers on Dinochirus has been a hotly debated topic, from a fossil perspective, there has been no direct evidence of feathers on Dinochirus, but this has not stopped some from speculating. 
Much of this speculation stems from Dinochirus' grouping as an Ornithomimosaur, and more importantly, as a Cellurosaur, a grouping of dinosaurs identified for their close relation to modern birds, as well as many of their members showing evidence of feathers. Those who believe in this theory of feathers for Dinochirus propose that this creature would sport a fan of feathers at the tip of their tail for display, and also be covered in a thin layer of protofeathers that would keep the animal warm when moving through the water. Once again, this is largely restricted to just speculation. Dinochirus would have lived during the late Cretaceous, almost 70 million years ago, with fossils indicating it would have lived throughout modern Mongolia, but it is very likely this could extend to other areas of modern-day Central Asia. Based on geological analysis, it is believed the environment of Dinochirus would be composed of various rivers, streams, and mudflats, with the climate significantly more humid than the current desert ecosystem. This area would be home to other giant herbivores, such as the heavily armed Therizinosaurus and the massive Saurolophus. At full size, it is unlikely many smaller predators, like the Alioramus, could challenge this creature, but bite marks on Dinochirus indicate the apex predator, Tarbosaurus, would be more than a match. Due to our limited fossil records throughout much of the late 1900s for this creature, Dinochirus has had quite a gap in pop culture appearances from its original discovery but most likely owed to its uh, distinctive appearance, Dinochirus has certainly made up for this. Some of these roles include video games like 2020's Path of Titans and 2021's Jurassic World Evolution 2. Documentaries like 2009's Bizarre Dinosaurs, 2019's Amazing Dino World, and possibly one of its most recognizable roles, 2022's Prehistoric Planet. Heck, even here on YouTube, being the main dinosaur in 2023's short film, The Hatchling. It's only 10 minutes over on Digital Duck. Give it a watch if you haven't. Great stuff. The world of dinosaurs was truly a terrifying place, where only the strongest, the smartest, and in the case of Dinochirus, the strangest could survive. For much of its time known by humanity, this creature was an enigma, but the truth of Dinochirus is almost hard to believe. With its large mouth, larger claws, and possible feather coverings, Few creatures can stick in your mind quite like Dinochirus. I guess you could say it is one of a dino kind. That's good do for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Dinochirus and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I can certainly see why so many people have latched onto this dinosaur. It's like a platypus on super steroids. It's so stupid looking, you can't help but love it. Next time, we'll be revisiting a dinosaur I've wanted to revisit for a long time. The actually not so proto, Protoceratops. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.